Assalamu alaikum ya Sayyidi Wa alaikum assalam wa Can students share some small contracts or are they unique to each student? Thank you Sayyidi Zisha probably has a, a better analogy for that. I, I would I would think in the people who know these, these systems which well, I'm not an expert in these systems, you're thinking about staking where you buy a large portfolio and you start to earn something from it but you didn't really give up what you got. Means the uloom and the knowledges have many byproducts means they begin to fill your understanding and you wish to share little trinklets of them here and there. So it's like you're staking on your contract. So there is a way to share knowledges with people but the most important that's why we're, we're, we're trying to teach people is that you don't want to be continuously sending information that is not to the full benefit of somebody and could be falsely connecting them to you and that's where you'll have a trouble and a difficulty. So if you find 10 people who want to listen to you, for example not the person only but in our lives growing up and I start to talk to them and talk to them and talk to them as if it's coming from me. So then now their hearts are thinking a contract is coming to me from him and they forgot about the shaykh. And they don't have a contract, it's not on any binary system, it's not locked to anything because that individual is not of that reality and that's the problem. So when you share a little bit, okay you get people interested but your nafs may jump in to say, hey this is really good, I don't even have to say where the source is, I'll just talk like I'm really wise and people will be interested. But that's why the system to safeguard the student was take the clip of the video of the shaykh put it out. As soon as somebody listens and is interested immediately the shaykh now has sent out a contract into that person's heart. As soon as they listen to this shaykh a contract is issued onto their heart because they now took a knowledge from a, a viable source. So like if you don't mint a coin you can't give a contract, you can't put… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yourself on, a, on an exchange and say, here, buy this coin. So it's the same analogy that when the shaykh, when, the, when Prophet authorizes a shaykh, he's now on an exchange. He's on an authorized Muhammadan exchange. Anybody who deals with him will receive a contract as soon as they hear one of his knowledges because he's on an authorized, the ijazah was an authorized exchange, a Muhammadan exchange. As soon as somebody clicks on a YouTube they hear, immediately a contract is going into their heart and it's locked on, the shaykh's knowledge is locked on a contract into that person's heart. And it begins to now send a, a dividend, send a blessing to them. If they begin to lock in and begin to connect and want to then learn more and then all these other contracts are now flowing to them. Then imagine how somebody deviates somebody from all of that because they just want to go out and, and post the shaykh's teachings as if it's from themselves and they just build an audience but they built no contracts and there's no connection to anyone. And then people later will find out, oh I didn't, I didn't really connect to anyone and that's, that's the danger. But as soon as they propagate 
authorized teachings from the authorized teacher, immediately contracts are established, fires and, and energies are addressing the servant and that becomes a source of many blessings in their life. And that's why in, in one word they can change the destiny of somebody. When they connect to a shaykh or listen to a talk, immediately a contract is sent into their heart. That contract has the ability to change the entire destiny of somebody. Because if they were just going to the mall and going to the gym and going here and going there all their life, that's not a destiny of anything. As soon as they heard this knowledge means now they received the Muhammadan token. They receive the Muhammadan light. That token, that reality is immensely priceless. It immensely changed the destiny of that person's soul beyond their imagination. That they can't even imagine what Allah will now give to them because they're the recipient of these Muhammadan tokens, these Muhammadan realities. Just to teach in the, in the analogy of this dunya. Imagine somebody would have sent you a hundred bitcoins, somebody paid 10,000 bitcoins to order a pizza 15 years ago because nobody knew what bitcoin was and he had a million so I guess he sent 10,000 for a pizza. If you would have had just 500 of those you know what the, the value would have been. So because people don't understand what the Muhammadan haqqaiq is, they don't value it because this earth is upside down they, they think the movie stars and Bollywood stars are, are more important than the people whom teach knowledges. Because of that they don't understand the value, right? So these golden coins are being sent every time they listen to these teachings, read a book, look at an article, listen to a TikTok, watch a video, look at the Instagram. All of those are dressing and blessing their soul that will take them into the grave and into akhirah. So that can be even understood the, the immense value of that reality, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the reality of Sayyidina Zulkarnain mentioned in Surat Al Kahf? InshaAllah, we'll get there when we get there. InshaAllah, soon. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Is there a feeling associated with knowledge that's transferred to the heart by your shaykh? A feeling? A feeling of knowledge? <laughs> yeah, you feel energy. All these talks for all these years it's you're going to feel energy. That you're going to heat up, you're going to feel energy, that's why so you have to have the meditation book, you have to have the uh, angelic oceans of power book. All of these realities you have to be reading these realities and uh, meditating and contemplating, it's all energy. This is not uh, psychology and this is not uh, what is it called, the, the thing where they just philosophy. It's not like we're just philosophizing, oh I wonder what it's like, no, no this is real. You're going to feel like you've been overtaken, energies come. It's like the twilight zone, like the outer limits. There used to be a show called Outer Limits that for the next 15 minutes <laughs> your television will be overtaken. Yeah, so as soon as you begin to connect you feel the energies are coming into you, you feel that you know, you're being pushed aside and energies are coming in. So it's, it's very real, very, very powerful, very vibrant. And as soon as you're listening and meditating and we said before you're going to start to visualize the shaykh and the encryption of light is flowing into thought. These are all very real events, none of this is a philosophy. But if you tune in just one time and think, oh this is like a, a philosophy we just think about it. No, no this is actual step by step by step and they require immense participation. You can't just tune in one time and try and say, oh I don't feel anything, bye. No, you have to participate along the whole way. It's by your actions and your deeds that are important, it's all encrypted. Allah is not going to let anything out without a very high level of security checks. Did the person have good character? Did the person have, have generosity and, and uh, true and sincere uh, belief? All of those, once those keys are you know like uh, multiple authentication, you want to go online to an app it sends you a code to your phone number to make sure that is this really you 
What do you think, all of these authentications and Allah doesn't have a system? Must have a very encrypted system. Every time you try to do something they send a code into you to see what your character is like and what the response will be, will be the code of authentication to get in. So it means everything is very encrypted in the heavenly kingdom otherwise it would be run by shaitans running all over the place stealing everything. It just requires a servant to be sincere, consistent and practice everything. If a student thinks they can fool the system they merely fool themselves and they face great, great, great difficulties because of that character. So it, it requires a sincere and, and uh, observant servant in which they try their best to be nothing, to, to be sincere, to participate, support and to do the whole system so that they're not sitting there trying to steal the knowledges so they can open up their own school. It's not, not ever going to happen and the reverse difficulty comes on to that because the intention was not good. They don't reveal themselves. Like in dunya the problem is that in dunya if you go somewhere with a bad intention immediately they call the person and say, oh you can't get out, get out, you have to get out. But that's not the way with Allah because His Rahman is mercy. Means that the person can be sitting with many different intentions. Many people are coming and listening for different intentions but if the intention is not sincere and they don't want to participate, they don't want to be charitable, they don't want to be giving, they don't want to go out and support, they don't want to feed, they don't want to, to do all of these things and maybe they're coming just to get some information and make their own school, it's not, make their own tariqah. We've had people come say, oh I'll make my own tariqah and then call people to my house in my living room and teach them. Very bad because lots of difficulty come onto those types of people. So this is a path based on sincerity and Allah may take a long time where you think you're getting away with something but it, it's like a, Allah giving you more rope to, to, to make it more difficult. So it's always best in ourselves to remind ourselves to be sincere, that we're asking for sincerity and that we're asking to do everything that the shaykhs are teaching because that opens sincerity, that opens sincerity that all of what they're teaching opens this way of realities inshaAllah. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Are we to recite the names of Prophet alongside the names of Allah as you mentioned the analogy or concept with the lock and key? Sure we have all of that in the Dalal Khirat that there's the 201 names in Dalai Khirat of Allah or, or the 99 names of Allah and 201 names of Prophet as much as they can recite that so that the names of Allah are always dressing them and blessing them and that the names of Sayyidina Muhammad open those tajalis from Allah inshaAllah. So as often as they can recite them, those whom reciting Dalal Khirat it's in the awrad of Dalal Khirat daily inshaAllah and in the Fajr awrad has the 99 names for every Fajr again so you have to be reciting the Fajr awrad. Uh, you can recite it right after Fajr or sometime in the day if you can't do it at the Fajr time inshaAllah and then recite Dalal Khirat and has the names of Prophet Every name of Prophet is a dress and a blessing upon the soul which bears its fruits, takes away its difficulties. So imagine so all these things that we face in life, it's key, it's reality, it's taking away of burden, it's sending of blessings are all in these names. So the one whom recites them often is then being dressed by many things, alleviated by many things. So every, everything has its key and the key in the name of Prophet is a key for every opening and for every door and for every difficulty to be pushed and every blessing and bounty to be sent inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How can we defeat the imagination and inner anger of a problem that hasn't even started? Yeah that, that the, that's the difficulty is the salawats that don't go into your mind, don't sit and meditate in your mind. That's why if you follow our whole system it's to conquer the mind meditation. 
Some people think they just sit there and quiet and, and they will uh, literally go into every problem and overthink every issue and that's insanity. And that lead people to be insane in the membrane. But uh, most important is to meditate with sound, with salawats and in your heart visualize the shaykh so that you're not going into issues, you're not overthinking anything. You're actually not thinking about dunya, you, you want to take all these thoughts away, you don't want anything from dunya. You want to think about being in the presence of Prophet And as soon as you can think of that and that my shaykh is present with me, how, how you could even possibly try to think of some dunya matter or dunya person? But the people who are not training in this way, their understanding of meditation is sit and be quiet and reach nirvana but there's no nirvana and there's no quiet because as soon as you sit like that shaitan is your meditation partner and begin to talk to you all day, all night, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah If we have bad characteristics and a weak mind, is it a good idea to stay secluded at home in the month of the cave and support via the charity or should we make the effort to go out and help in person? No, you should do everything, or would you be one or the other? So keep yourself balanced and one if you, you have bad character, everybody has bad character. You know, you still have to go out and, and deal with people, give sandwiches, do whatever you possibly can wherever you're safe to do it. Uh, you give online and uh, attend the zikrs, the majlis, to do the, the readings, to do the studyings and uh, send out uh, links, I, I do everything. You don't make it one or the other but keep ourselves very active throughout the day, keep sending links all day long. Anyone know how to do the link? It's very simple, go to the charity page, look at zakat and then on the bottom there's a box with an arrow that says, share this. Click share, copy the link and then go to Facebook and post the link. So then you're actually sharing that page. Then you go to the website, look at an article you liked, share again the same, box with an arrow, share, copy, paste and then paste it into Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want. Take the videos if you know a little bit of editing and then cut the videos or take the actual TikTok video and share it to your TikTok or to other platforms or Telegram or Instagram or whatever you want to do. But keep yourself busy spreading the knowledge, alhamdulillah. You build a great account with Allah We said, that's multi-level marketing. In dunya they give people an affiliate link and as soon as they start sending, 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 sending you get this commission, commission, commission. And then you see all these websites going crazy with people logging on, logging on. But it's for dunya. But for akhirah people, ah, why are they going to do that? I don't want to do that. But if you have belief, you say, no, I'm going to get my commission from Allah What did Allah describe if you send one person and, and one person accepts Islam from you, it's more than all the treasures on earth if they accept Islam. Imagine the one who brought them, how many treasures Allah is going to give to them. So imagine then you take these knowledges and begin to spread them everywhere, post them on everything. If one person came, what Allah is going to grant the soul of that person because it came through your click. Allah knows, Allah has the contract that you sent it out, that person clicked because you sent it. But these all require faith, that's why the teachers are teaching, have faith, have faith. If you know if, if, if 300 people have faith how you can move a mountain? You don't need 30,000. If 300 people are posting and posting daily multiple times, you can move a mountain like that. And I think we are moving a mountain on social media because you see a lot of posts because people are gaining their faith, they see the reward, they see the blessings within their life, they feel the love of Prophet they, They're learning, mashaAllah every month there's a, how many events in a month? And before tariqah you probably even didn't think of more, one, one event was Ramadan. Two, you knew two Eids and one <laughs> Ramadan. Now look every day, Urs, the Wiladat, Wifat and all the blessings of every month and all these realities. Well how, how everyone got that? 
So this means it's a continuous process of illumination. So alhamdulillah we want for our brothers what we have for ourselves so spread the good word. Keep yourself busy spreading links, not gossiping, backbiting, definitely not direct messaging anyone. Keep away from talking to people and then you don't know if it's a, somebody of an inappropriate uh, or an opposite from who you are. So the best to keep your fingers busy sharing links of knowledge inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah This talk on building a spiritual door is extraordinary. Please can this excerpt be a video release that we can share? SubhanAllah, I see the shaykh as a portal to the Divine Presence in a lot of ways. Alhamdulillah, inshaAllah Ali, will, Ali will, will put it on to TikTok right away. So if you don't have a TikTok account no problem, it's a nasty platform and not, not appropriate at all times. You can actually take that TikTok link and share it to Facebook which is, is much more secure, much better. So once he makes that available on Instagram, take the link and share it onto Facebook and other platforms, Telegram, wherever you want to different groups, join different groups with 10,000, 20,000 people on te Telegram and say, well I think you'd like this and send it to them. So the jinn ones, paralysis, UFOs and the concept of manifestation and portals are very important because they'll start manifesting on earth because their system is based on that, right? They'll say, oh these, these creatures are coming through these portals. Well Allah has these portals and there are 124,000 portals on this earth at all times. These are the souls of uh, pious people whom Allah has given. And there are more powerful portals for those whom Allah has authorized them to be a portal to bring people into that reality. As soon as somebody connects with that portal, visualizes that portal, understands it, then no doubt they can move into realms that can't be imagined. And those are the realities of the holy hadith of Prophet that one hour is like 70 years because as soon as you connect with that type of light. Uh, one hour in their presence is 70 years of a dress upon you that you can't imagine what that is. So th these are the world of light and, and the realm of light and, and un unimaginable realities. And we described before and we described I think last week that nobody even mentioned. That's why sometimes when we're going through our questions we're not hearing the questions from the talks. So maybe it was going over or nobody really stopped to contemplate. You think you're reading Qur'an but in reality there's no way you're reading Qur'an, Qur'an is reading you. So if you're not able to retrieve Qur'anic secrets, uh, Qur'an has not deemed you a, a viable option yet. So don't think that it's you because the reverse of the thought is what's important. If I think I'm going to retrieve knowledges but then you don't know who's the boss. The Qur'an is the boss, Allah's Word is, is the power. So that Word is actually observing me. So when we taught you that the Qur'an is where? It's coming from Prophet And what's it Naisha described the salam of Prophet That he is the kitab of Allah And that he is walking Qur'an So it means then who's looking at you? Who's reading you? So it means that when the Qur'an wants to read you, you have to be washed, you have to be in wudu, you have to be clean, you have to have made your salawats, you have to have made your connection and love and muhabbat of Prophet and say, Sayyidi Rasulul Kareem, Ya Kitabullah that open for my heart from these knowledges that flowing from your heart. And the Qur'an will begin to evaluate you and based on its evaluation of you it will Send its encryption and its realities, inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, I'm uh, colorblind. I can't see the difference between different shades of colors. And when I close my eyes, I can't imagine or see anything. Even if I try, it's all black. Is there a way to overcome this? Colorblind and not seeing anything, I don't understand the, the, the similarity of that. Colorblind is let's say for example the extent of your color blindness was I see everything in black and white shape. But that has nothing to do with closing your eyes and seeing everything black. 
color blind is that you can't differentiate from different colors. Let's say you were completely black and white. Right now if you close your eyes, can you see Mickey Mouse? 99.9% of all people can because it's in your basic software. So basic software has basic everything. Have you opened a software with… have you ever bought a laptop with nothing on it? No, it has basic operating software otherwise the laptop is with what? Allah sent every human with a basic software. So they close their eyes, you can see Mickey Mouse right now, he's got these two ears, he's black and white. Other iconic images for, for every country, their software is already there. So it's, it's already there. Now those whom believe in an Islam, look at the Holy Kaaba and you stare at it and then close your eyes and ask, Ya Rabbi let me to see the Holy Kaaba and you begin to see it trying to come through. And you meditate more and contemplate that you're in the presence of Holy Kaaba and you again with your power of manifestation you begin to make that to manifest. So then these holy locations require you to ask to begin to manifest and then have the faith in which to make it to manifest. So that's a different training and then you understand the importance that when you close your eyes if all day long you're looking at inappropriate things it becomes very difficult to meditate because instead of seeing the Kaaba you're seeing every inappropriate thing that you are looking at all day, all day and that's what shaitan wants. Why shaitan is feeding you thousands of images of inappropriate people, inappropriate pictures so that you can't sit and actually use your manifestation power of the Kaaba and then to be dressed by the manifestation. Allah wa he wants you to be manifest, He wants you to be dressed by the manifestation of your zina because He wants to kill you and destroy you. If you understood that then you understand His game. Of course He doesn't want you to be manifesting the Kaaba, He knows how powerful you are. And that's why we said more powerful than the Kaabas manifest the Rosa. Go online and say the Rauda and the, the holy shrine and location of Prophet in Medina you'll see the Rosa Sharif and then you begin to take that picture, put it on your phone every day asking and gaze at it, close your eyes and asking Allah that keep me there, listen to salawats and in no time you'll be able to Visualize yourself at that location asking Prophet please dress me, listen to salawat so shaitan doesn't play with your ears and then ask me to dress me because now when you manifest that your soul is entering into Medina and is at the Rosa Sharif. As a result of being at the Rosa Sharif you're asking not to be dressed by those lights. Then you'll understand, oh every time I look at these bad things I have very hard time reconnecting. And then you see the game shaitan's playing because shaitan's like, whoa you're going to now catch power from Medina? No, 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 no. Let's send him thousand inappropriate images and that all those inappropriate images are now dressing you from all of the azab, all the badness. So then that's how this game is, is happening. So we have a lot of power. If you use it to manifest these realities you can then begin to be dressed by these realities. Inshaallah. Sayyidi he's saying he can't see Mickey Mouse, he can't see anything when he closes his eyes. It's then he's got to practice because the, the color differentiation or differentiating Black. between colors, what, why does it affect the, the closing of eyes? I don't know unless that's a medical condition that because of that condition they can't but even beyond that it's the heart. The heart can cast the image. So when you look at the Rosa Sharif that you'll go on to Google. Look at Rosa Sharif, lock a screenshot of that, put that onto your phone. Keep looking at that, it may not be all the colors correct, it doesn't have to be because you're going to look at a holy location, you close your eyes asking Allah that keep me at Rosa Sharif in the presence of Prophet Open your eyes again, look at the photo. Open your eyes, look again at the photo and train yourself to burn the image onto your heart. And then you'll tilt your head down because this is not looking through here. 
So color blindness is based on the optics and the optic nerve of your eyeballs. Our sight is nothing to do with the head because you're going to tilt the head and this is based on the heart casting an image from my faith. That's why you put your head down. Other meditations say, no keep your head because the spine energy. No, no we don't want the spine energy, we don't want the head energy. You actually keep your head down when you meditate so that to cast the image from your heart above you and that image has to come here. It has nothing to do with your optic nerves, has nothing to do with seeing out through your eyes. This has to do with the heart. And then are you doing your salawats, are you doing your, your donations, are you doing your khidmat and doing all of these things to revive and take away the rust of the heart. Zikrullahi tatma'inu quloob that the zikr of Allah is purifies the heart. So the heart that has not been purified is rusted. So it looks like an old rusty pipe that should have been shiny. So the zikr, continuous zikrs, lots of zikr makes the heart to be illuminated and shiny. When the heart is illuminated and shining what happens? It reflects everything like a mirror. So the heart that does a lot of salawats, a lot of zikr is like a mirror. Anytime it closes it reflects all these realities. So all of these things have to be done not just take one and say, I, I did this or I didn't do this. The whole package has to be done. Charity has to be given to open sincerity and to take away burdens and sayat. Things that we may have done that angered Allah are taken by charitable acts. So each one has its own reality. You can't say, oh I prayed and that took it away. No, no that prayer you did maybe because that was your fard and there's no reward for that. Did you pray a sunnah prayer to take something away? So each thing that Prophet brought for us has its reality and that's why I then try to observe all of them. Do the prayer, the sunnah prayers, do your charity, do your zikr, do your meditation, do all of these practices. All of them will open up that reality inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Does the shaykh test us even if we are not physically present with him? Forgive me for this foolish, foolish question. Sure. If we haven't got it by now, none of what we talked about had to do with physical. So you got to buy two meditation books and two angel books because none of what I've talked about in the last 15 years had to do with anything physical. So this is nothing to do with the physical. As a matter of fact anyone physically with the shaykh will be handicapped thinking, oh I'm close to the shaykh I don't even have to listen anymore. It's not that, that's why the shaykh is, is more and more isolated. This has nothing to do with anything physical because this is not the physical realm. This has to do with you sitting and connecting in the world of light. So the shaykh is broadcasting to you from anywhere, doesn't matter where you're understanding, you're receiving the knowledges. Now you sit to connect with the world of light so it doesn't have anything to do with physicality nor is physicality necessary because we describe physicality can be a handicap and that's why the expression is that the people in Mecca they don't make hajj. And really if you go there you'd be astonished because you get sad you say like, why do people do like this? Because they live there they don't take it as something special anymore. They don't hold it with a high reverence, oh it's there, oh yeah, they, they do weird things around. And, but a stranger coming, to, oh I can't do like this, I can't do like this, they keep an ihtiram, they keep a respect, they keep such a high reverence because now you're in the holy presence of the Kaaba. So th this has its own reality and people have the same ability to immediately bring down somebody in their eyes, oh it's nothing special, I'm like this, they're like this, we're all the same, who cares? And their nafs will begin to enter and bring down everything. So people are at a benefit if they're not in the presence of a shaykh, that they can study from a distance, especially if the shaykh is tarbiyah and teaching all the time. You don't need that but before if there was no internet how could you be taught? So Allah opened now these virtual classes because you'd have to fly somewhere thousands of miles and sit there for you know a few years because how would you be taught? We were used to wait for Shaykh Nazim to go to London, they would make cassettes 25 years ago 
And then somebody would come back with 15 cassettes and we'd all sit and listen, listen, listen. And then somebody would make a video and it was very bad quality on a CD. And then you take these CDs, copy them and give them out, you it was very difficult to follow tariqah. So yes, and that's why then there were shaykhs everywhere, you would go live there for 15 years, 20 years and study. But now Allah opened a platform in which that's not necessary. Wherever somebody is they have the safety of their own living room, they listen, they follow the guidance, they can go out and begin to implement the teachings, they give out the charity, they take the links, spread them. Alhamdulillah, if they find themselves growing exponentially very fast because they they have a, a tremendous zeal, they want to achieve, they want to reach to that reality, they want to have the ta'weez, they go to the site and they want to have the sunnah rings, they want to have the ta'weez, they want all of these things. As a result they are manifesting an immense importance. So I said before the shaykh may have 20 rings in front of you and you say, I don't want to <laughs> forget about it, oh, I'll see that tomorrow. And you don't know what secret was in it but somebody a thousand miles away says, I have to have that. And as soon as you order that you don't know with what kind of secret that's coming to you. It's nothing, nothing is coming and flowing through them that is of any normalcy. None of their knowledge is normal. What do you think about all of the different secrets? We said Balul was selling a, a match house and anyone who bought his one dirham house was given a paradise, a house in paradise. What do you think Prophet is giving in the last days for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi From one ring, from one tasbih, from one taweez. But it requires faith but the people at a distance they, they have an immense amount of zeal that they want it, they want to have it, they want the ta'weez, they want… Based on their faith, their want, Allah manifesting immense realities and secrets from that. So it requires somebody to have faith and once you have faith then Allah works in mysterious and magical ways. It means it can't be even understood what Allah bestows of His bounty upon servants, inshaAllah. And it's nothing from me, it's all from Allah that this is the, the bounty of Allah It requires the faith of people to have that, that manifests for them as a door. As soon as they enter through that door then the rest is, is, is Allah's immense grace and majesty. SubhanAllah Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon Wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa Wa Basir Al Surat Al Fatiha Shahad Ya Rasul Kareem. You can get the rings cheaper anywhere, you can get the, the cane cheaper anywhere, you can get taweez cheaper anywhere, you can get chicken cheaper anywhere, you can do anything you want anywhere. We had this problem 20 years ago when we put water, even if we bought the water for a dollar, put the water at the zikr and say five dollars for barakah. People would say, well I can buy the water myself, I'll get it from the store directly. But you kind of lost the point. That water in the zikr is not what your water you're getting, this is a water that Allah is dressing and blessing. But it required people to have faith and when they have faith they realize, okay this is supporting. So this supporting is an immense barakah for me, it's a sadaqah, it's a, it's a zakah, it's a complete cleansing as well as what Allah is dressing that reality when it arrives to me. So that's what's important, the, the essence of all of this is faith. My faith made everything to manifest in my life. I walk through that door and that hasn't stopped its miraculous manifestation. And whatever happened and whatever badness came still never changed that door, never lost our character. And alhamdulillah Allah's grace and, and Divine Majesty continuously dressing. As a result the shaykh is then teaching the same system. So everyone's faith is, is unique to themselves. If the whole time they're thinking, ah this is such a rip off, this is a rip off, no way I'm gonna get this water. Even if they force you some big alam came to our center and it was the birthday of Mawlana Shah Naqshban came to our heart from our shaykhs to give him a zamzam on the night of Mawlana Shah Naqshban. So as he's leaving we gift you with a zamzam. And that's one of the nights that Shah Naqshban Qutta gives his secret 
it's a big island, famous one on, on, on TV. And he said, no. He said, no, thank you and he gave it back. And the shaykh again, ishaarat and I gave it, he said, no. He kept giving it back to me. Means the secret wasn't for him. So Allah didn't find satisfaction in his character or whatever it was, but that secret wasn't for him what was coming on that night and through that uh, reality. So we are our worst enemies. So the one whom has faith can pick up a chocolate and the whole universe open. Imam Ghazali got all his uloom and secrets because for Milad al Nabi he let the fly drink from the inkwell. And all his life he was trying to get his knowledge, his secrets. He was crying on that night that, everything I do I am, I'm about to lose faith, nothing has opened for me. And then it was Milad night and he was writing and making his notes and he said for himself that, oh fly is coming to drink from the ink of his pen. He said, for the sake of Mawli the Nabi I'll let the, the flight is also Allah's creation, I'll let the flight to drink, I don't shoo him away before I write. And he allowed the fly to drink the, the water and then left. And then later Allah inspired within his heart for the act that you did to show this rahmah and the mercy for the sake of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad I'll open for you everything. And he said, that one act opened everything. His well, 30 years of searching for it never opened but he gave the access of a fly to have water for milad. So, when we say Allah works in mysterious ways, look for the mystery, you know. Pay attention to the mystery in life, not the obvious. Do the things that require faith and then that's where the miracle of Islam is, that's where the miracle of this, this path is inshaAllah. The Hurmat of Muhammad and Mustafa wa bi siri Rasul. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.